This video will show you how to create a Clojure script project. In this series of videos, I'm using a line engine template called MIS. This template contains the minimum necessary for a Clojure script application. Although I'm not sure, I think the name is based on architect Mies van der Rohe's statement that less is more. You can get the latest version, as of this video, 0.6.0, by cloning this Git repository. Then go to the directory it created and install the template. Now you can use Line Engine to create a new Clojure script application based on that template. This command tells Line Engine to build a new project based on the MIS template and name the project Testing. Since I'm using IDEA, I'm going to import this project by navigating to the directory where it was created, importing from an external model. Line Engine, accepting the root directory and the project to import. The first time you open a project in IDEA, you'll be asked to select an SDK, a software development kit. In this case, I've already chosen Java 1.8 and name the project as suggested. Let's look at what the project contains. First, this is the project.clj file. It gives information about your project in general. This particular project is for doing experimentation with Clojure script, so let's fix the description. The project.clj file also tells Line Engine what other project your project depends upon and any plugins that might be necessary, as well as other information. The items that begin with a colon, such as colon description, are called keywords and they will become front and center in the video about maps. The items in square brackets make up a vector, and they will have a starring role in their own video as well. The project directory also contains a readme.md markdown file that you can use if you're putting your project on a distributed version system like GitHub. Also in the project directory is index.html. That's going to be your project's main web page. As you can see, it's quite minimal. The most important file is in the source directory testing folder called core.cljs, and this is your first exposure to Clojure script file. At the moment, all it does is the classic hello world, but let's take a look at it. The first line gives the namespace for the project. Namespaces are Clojure's way of keeping code compartmentalized so that you can use someone else's modules that have the same function names as your code without having a name collision. The lines that begin with two semicolons are comments. The lines here happen to be the ones that let you connect to the REPL, a way of using Clojure script interactively, and you will be using them, so delete the semicolons to uncomment the lines. This line lets your project print to the web console, always a good idea when developing, and the last line does some output. You may have noticed a pattern here. Pretty much everything is enclosed in parentheses, the first item in the parentheses looks like some sort of a command, and the remaining items are the command arguments. And in fact, that's exactly how Clojure Script works. The first item is a function, and the remaining items are the function's arguments. But we'll get into that in much more detail later. While these videos use the MIS template, there are a lot of other templates out there for creating new projects. Their project.clj file might look different, and they may put files in different directories, but all the essential parts will be there. No matter what template you use, you now have a Clojure script project.